Oh my gosh. It's turkey time. It's turkey time. Okay, after all the talk yesterday about raising our own turkeys and how much we enjoy turkey, I decided since I had a glorified turkey in the fridge to thawing, I thought that I would put one in today. Yesterday, after so much talk about raising our own turkeys and eating turkeys and doing our English family turkey recipes, I absolutely had to get up this morning and throw a turkey in. We like to try to get something in the crock pot or in the oven in the morning. So dinner is kind of already ready when we're done our work for the day. We don't always get to that in the morning, but we try to. So today it's turkey day. That's my butter melting for the <laughs> stuffing. So I'm just cubing up some bread. You can use whatever type of bread you want. We have to use an egg-free bread because our son Chase has food allergies. So I'm just gonna chop up I think about a dozen pieces of bread. Depends on how big your turkey is. We like to have as much stuffing as our bird will fit. Oh yeah. Uh, funny thing, Dayton loves to stuff the turkey. And so usually it's his job. And we're gonna get this all ready. So our English family turkey stuffing recipe is so simple. It's almost so simple that you question if you've done everything when you're about to put it in the bird. All you're gonna do is dice up and cube some bread, any bread of your choice. You're going to dice up a large apple. Next year, we should have our own apples to use. We should have our own apples next year. You're going to dice up one large onion. No, don't cry. The last time I cut onions, I was bawling in the kitchen and I never cry cutting onions, but these onions in this bag were much riper, I think, than ones we usually get because I was crying. So let's not cry while we cut onions today. I can smell the, that they're nice and ripe, so they're make me tear up. I did half without crying. <laughs> There's no tears. There's no tears. I'm crying. Are you crying? <laughs> ready to put in a little bit of poultry seasoning. This is sort of based on like personal preference, but I usually put in like a good solid tablespoon, if not a little bit more. Put in some salt and pepper. Again, it's just your, oh, here comes the tears. <laughs> oh baby, don't cry. <laughs> put in some salt and pepper. Again, I usually put in maybe about a teaspoon or so. I don't put too much in. And sometimes I don't put salt in at all. And other times, I put in just a little bit. And then all you're gonna do is add butter and I'm gonna do about a third of a cup. And then you're just gonna toss it. And I just use my hands because it's usually the best way to get it done. Make sure your hands are nice and clean. Like, I mean, it's going inside the turkey's butt, so. <laughs> it's going inside the turkey's butt. That's literally it. It's so easy. It took me two seconds to do it. And now I want to put it into the bird, which as I said, is usually my son Dayton's job because he loves to be able to put the stuffing in. He also loves to eat the bird. We're just gonna remove anything out of the turkey that we don't want. Usually there's a bag in one end. We don't even eat the neck. So I have not a very big turkey, but I do seem to have a pretty good space to be able to fill in with stuffing. So I'm going to stuff the bird. I never thought I'd be doing that on YouTube. <laughs> it seems so awkward until this camera there. <laughs> oh, man. All right, and then there's always some room in the other end of the bird, so I like to try to put in as much as I can, make use of all the stuffing. This is why I was saying sometimes it's dependent on how big your bird is, how much bread I dice up. Right. Or how big, if it's a smaller turkey than this, which our last one we cooked that I mentioned was about $65 plus tax, was actually a little bit smaller than this one. Wow. That's that a decent why. sized turkey though. Yeah. That's not bad. That'll last two days. <laughs> Will it? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe not. Maybe tonight. I'll our favorite is family. leftover turkey okay. YouTube family. We're ready. That's literally it. And I'm going to put it in the oven and wait. The main thing that people do when cooking turkeys that mess up their turkey and dry out the turkey is t cooking their turkey way too long. So I'm gonna look and double check exactly what the weight of my turkey is and I'm going to adjust my cooking based on the size of my turkey. Don't just assume that every turkey needs to get thrown in for three or four hours because it's based on how large your turkey is. How rewarding will it be when we have our own turkeys? 
I just keep thinking about how surprised I was when I called the feed shop to order our turkeys. We're getting some of our turkeys for meat birds from the feed shop. We have a country co-op that we go to that we absolutely love the staff at and love like everything that we get. We trust everything that they kind of suggest us at that store. But we're also getting some of a different type of turkey, the red bourbons that Philip mentioned yesterday from a lady that we were able to get some of our chicks from last year. We had a great experience with her and she has the red bourbons, which we're really interested in having those as our breeders. So we're going to have some breeders, which I can't remember how much she said the cost of the breeders were. I think it was a few dollars more per turkey than the feed shop, but the feed shop is $9.80 for a turkey to be able to raise. So if I'm gonna raise it for the several months that we're gonna have it here for the raising for meat season for $9.80, we could put one in the freezer to have one turkey a month and then not have to buy 65 plus dollar turkeys. Right. And I do know that there's an expense in feeding them and all of it kind of, I guess we'll see after our first year how that really plays out in terms of the finance aspect of it. But just for the health aspect of it and knowing where your food comes from, the enjoyment of having them and being able to do the process from start to finish and be self-sufficient is huge for us in terms of that aspect. So there's like different things you can really focus on. Like, are you looking to save money on food? Are you looking to know where your food comes from? I'm hoping that the two of them can go hand in hand where it's a little bit cheaper to be able to have our own turkeys for the whole year and feed them than if we were to buy a dozen plus turkeys a year from the store. I was writing something on a homesteading forum that I'm on Facebook and I was asking like, who's had turkeys before? You know, what has your experience been with turkeys? I'm just trying to learn as much as I possibly can. And people said, have you ever heard the term of, oh, you little turkey? It's like that because apparently turkeys have a huge personalities and they do really silly things and they're a joy to have around the homestead. So I'm looking forward to seeing what turkeys are like because this will be our first time having them. boots for this. I didn't think it was that deep. Wow. I think we jinxed ourselves. I knew I shouldn't have said on yesterday's video that I couldn't wait for winter to be gone and that the snow was leaving and that I was going to plant some seeds. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have said that. What were you thinking, hon? Immediately regretted that. Well, I'll tell you, March has me just confused because I have no idea. This is a whole lot of snow, March. Winter decided to show up in March. Okay. We might have a little bit of a problem. Take a look at the wood shelter. Oh, we are running out of wood. Well, at least we can track and see what's out there right now. See if that bobcat's around. When the snow was coming down last night, I didn't think that much snow was actually coming down. And this morning, school was delayed and they're going to reassess like closer to lunchtime. Thought they're surely gonna go in the afternoon because there's really not that much snow, but I hadn't stepped outside yet. <laughs> it's much deeper than I thought. It's beautiful. Though. Look at it. I love when it blankets on the trees. We're gonna have to dig them out. Oh, that was a silly, <laughs> silly move. Oh, the forest looks so pretty. I want to go in the forest. Going first. Hi. <laughs> you heard me coming. You heard mom coming. You guys were almost snowed in. Morning, huggies. Hi. Oh, that's a good job. Hi. Hi. You guys want to get some greens? Hi, London. Hi, Boo Boo. <laughs> Look at how much they're shedding. Oh, yeah. Spring is in the air. Well, <laughs> it really is not. Well, <laughs> they think it is. Look at that. Yes. A mouthful of. Like, tell me you have horses without telling me you have horses. Have fun with that one. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds. Because without you by my side, I would be stuck here on the ground. You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me. I won't be stumbling in the dark. Your eyes are shining like the stars. YouTube family, I love days like today. Oh my gosh, snow gives me all the feels. Especially when you get you, you wrecked my mind. <laughs> I kept thinking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I kept thinking, should I throw it? The camera might be there. <laughs> that is hilarious. I risked it for the biscuit. I knew you were gonna get me. 
Lucky for you, I have a bad arm. Like a bad throw. <laughs> Me too. I wanna go see if we have any eggs this morning. I am gonna head over to the coop and see if we have any eggs this morning. The snow is so deep, it's tricky to walk in it this morning. I'm gonna have to dig myself in today. We put this extra wood here last night so that the hens didn't sneak out again. What are you doing with the chicken in the barn? We came out to bring the grains and just see what we needed to do for the night. Get ready for the horses to get tucked in before our blizzard comes. And this little miss was sitting on the little ledges right there, just chilling in the barn. And she had no problem me getting her right away. So she's probably like, how do I get back home? Yeah. So coincidental, we were just talking about how we need to adjust the coop and oh, it's okay baby. I know I've been holding you up for a few minutes. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna go back home. We're gonna go back home. Yeah, let's take her back. But um, <laughs> coincidental, I was just talking about the coop today. I'm like, we need to get situated. And this morning I said to you when I came in from getting our eggs, that one of the chickens was looking like she was trying to sneak under the door. Yeah. So I put a piece of wood across and I was like, oh, she won't be able to push that over. She did. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily she knew that this was a safe place and she wanted to bunk with well, the horses tonight. this was the original coop. So right. she was like, I'm going back home. You don't pay rent in this large barn. This is like, it took the eviction hey. notice literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm out of here. I ain't messing with this. You're not evicted yet. Sneaky. Now I need to do a head count, make sure no one else got out today, but she was the only one trying earlier. There's a blizzard coming, Dad. <laughs> All right, how many do we have? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's one up there. Eight, oh. Nine, and I'm holding ten. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, there's eggs. There's eggs? Yeah, there's more eggs. Oh, that's a great day for eggs. Okay. A couple of really beautiful eggs. I guess it's more than a couple. Three. These are our three beautiful eggs from tonight. So that makes, I think, seven eggs today. Seven or eight. And we had a whole bunch of different colors. Nothing like a late night barn mucking. <laughs> we typically do this chore in the morning, but we got the horses out this morning. And we weren't sure what the weather was going to do. So we did all of our other chores and our filming and everything else. Like, we'll do this in a little bit. And the day got ahead of us, so get this done before the horses come in tonight. I have to admit, you two family, I think I've only mucked the barn twice <laughs> since I'll the admit horses you arrived. Two family, at least just only mucked the barn once. <laughs> I'm not opposed to mucking out the barn, he just always beats me to it. They all poop in one spot, anyways. Makes it convenient, actually, that they do that. They seem to like this back corner of the barn. Easy enough. Our weather changes so quickly here in Nova Scotia that just about an hour ago, we saw the weather was starting to change. So we started getting everything ready. It's not very cold out, but we're getting some snow. <laughs> It'll pretty the horses look when they get some snow. Hi guys, time for bed babies. That's why we have an outdoor light. We don't have to put them to bed at six o'clock then because it gets dark here really early. Hi, it's time for bed. It's a snowy night. The boys are coming out to say goodnight. I'm gonna walk to the barn with the boys. Hi. Hi, London. Good night, YouTube family. You're covered in a blanket of snow. She's kissing you, Dayton. <laughs> huh, what am I on? Hey, girls. Come on. I think we got just one egg this morning. Oh, it's warm. It is a really warm egg. This egg was clearly just laid. Thank you, ladies. Hop on. We're gonna go see what tracks are back there. Snowed. Oh, we are so gonna get snowed. Ah! Camera down, camera down. Oh, it went all down the back of my jacket. Oh, that's cold. 
Oh wow, it went really. It's so dripping dirty. down the back of my coat. see here is ours and then our house is over this way somewhere but all this back here all this acreage is our beautiful acreage what should we put back here turkeys I was thinking of tucking in the coops for the meat birds and the turkeys in our forest but then have their big open pasture with some fencing back in this open area because some of it is, is pretty wet and then some of it is really dry it just depends on what portion you're at so we don't really use this land that much so it's great space to be able to have stuff that needs a little extra room because we're going to be making paddocks for the horses and then I think we're going to need some extra space to make runs for some of the birds but I want to make sure that they're tucked enough in so that if we have big storms their coops are sheltered yeah we'll have adequate sun still adequate shade still and then safety of being like tucked in so I think ultimately the trees could really shelter when we have those really, really high wind storms or really heavy rainstorms in the summertime. If we tuck it into like little alcoves where the trees are. Yeah, like so right over here, like there's the one really here, shallow. there's one back over there. We have a trail that comes out kind into the back crop. Yeah, right? where our love tree is, yep. So I was thinking somewhere kind of in there. When I was out here on the other day, right here is where the bobcat tracks were. So I don't see any tracks today but the tracks went all over the whole property that's why it's so important for us to think about the security of our coop systems and yeah. why we're kind of putting so much thought into exactly how we want to build them for the spring he, well we have security water. cameras all through Everywhere. our forest here oh, and so we've caught all the animals that we possibly can we've caught deer on the security camera big black bear on the security camera and definitely some of the largest bobcats I've ever seen. And I had never seen them until we moved here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't... Interesting, like, even some of the smaller predators in our area, like the weasels that you saw got into our pantry, they can be just as detrimental to your flock as the larger predators because they're so sneaky and they can get into even the tiniest of spots. So, actually, back in my old job, before I did YouTube, a colleague of mine lost a 17 of her 27 chickens to a weasel that got into their coop basically they decapitated all the chickens and left all the chickens there but didn't even eat the chickens right so it's so wasteful it's like they just go in to kill them for no reason I guess I don't really know but they can get into even the smallest of spots so it's very difficult and you want to make sure that all the coop systems that you design are unpenetrable un penetrable <laughs> but you still want them to be able to have their open run in the daytime it's mostly at night when we see a lot of that activity so. it's almost always at dusk or dawn when we see all of the activity even the bears and the, we we haven't seen coyotes, although Elish did see one just down the road, but I haven't seen any footprints here. And we have seen a lot of fox in our area, but never on our property yet. When I was coming home a couple of weeks ago, I saw what looked like a very large German shepherd in the dark <laughs> run across the road from the ocean side of the water straight across into the woods. And so the only thing I could figure out was that it was a coyote, but it was very big. So Ki a coyote. wolf or. But this is just such a waste to not use this land because we own it and we can make use of a lot of this. Come back! Oh my 
I got, I got holes in my boots. <laughs> Would you like a ride? <laughs> yes, please. It is so pretty on our land. Ah. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's deep here. Deep here. Okay, we made it over, no problem. Oh. Big bump. Whoa! <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, we were completely <laughs> vertical there for a second. Whoops. This is yeah. the pathway we go out sometimes just to get to that open area. So I was thinking we could make a really nice little like mulch path here to get to where the coops are and we could tuck the coops. Like there's a little alcove right in there that we could put the one of the coops and then there's another spot on this other side. I, met, I marked it out the other day kind of when we didn't have all the snow. Oh, it's so pretty in here. Big drop. There's a lot of snow there. Oh wow. I don't think a day goes by that I don't think like how on earth is this where we live? Like how is this our property? That's not one thing that I don't like about our property. I like our marshes, I like our grasses, I like all of our trees, I like the random weather we get. I like the space we have. Okay, maybe the hills are a little steep in some spots. If you dump me in that Brookville of England. <laughs> I might. <laughs> There's go. a little deep there. Holy. Next year at this time, we'll be eating our very own turkeys. <laughs>